investigates. It's on CRTV, Michelle Malkin, former Secret Service agent, NRA TV contributor Dan Bongino. Let's go over, shall we, Michelle? I love truth and history, and I know you do. Uranium One, that happened under President Obama's watch, right? And that's 20% of America's uranium, the foundational material for nuclear weapons. The interference and meddling in the 2016 election, that happened under Obama. Crimea happened under Obama. Ukraine happened under Obama. Uh, and the Syria red line uh, was crossed also under Obama. Um, how come the media didn't care about any of this? because they suffer from selective sovereignty syndrome. They only care about foreign meddling and uh, foreign conflicts uh, when uh, there's a president with an R by his name, and uh, especially when uh, that R comes in the word Trump, T-R-U-M-P. And you can go all the way back to the Clinton years and China Gate and the dangerous national security implications of all of the uh, campaign contributions that were coming in from shady characters all the way back then. And who was it that was sounding the alarm about uh, all of those scandals? Well, it wasn't the New York Slimes and it wasn't the Washington Compost. They were too busy printing all of the, uh, the condemnations from people blowing the whistle on it and referring to them as xenophobic and racist, which is what you talked about in your monologue. This is the classic left-wing playbook of attacking the messenger. And uh, it's a huge cloud, smoke and mirrors, um, to distract from the fact that these people are absolutely treasonous hypocrites. They can scream treason as loud as they want to, but the facts and the history speak for itself. And the other thing is, the president was stronger on Russia the whole time, and I, I was glad the president went out today and said, no, it was actually Obama that was the patsy for Putin. And I don't think, I don't think there's anybody in the world that doubts that if Putin wants to get aggressive, Donald Trump is president, it's not going to be the same as when Obama was president. He's not going to, he's not going to take Putin's crap. The idea that people think otherwise, it just shows that, that there's nothing Trump can do. He could cure cancer, Dan Bongino, at this point, and they still hate him. Sean, he's already been tougher on the Russians. You know, Sean, I'm really, I know you're tired of this too. I'm kind of like tired of being tired of it. But the, Michelle just pointed out so many abominations under the Clinton-Obama regime. I mean, Sean, what about the $500,000 payment from the Russian bank to the Clinton Foundation? The Russian bank that, by the way, was associated with the Kremlin. You know, what about the Bill tri uh, Clinton trip to Kazakhstan? I mean, they forget all of this stuff that actually happened, and then what Trump actually did, they ignore. Talking about the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, fighting for American natural gas interests over the Russian interests. You think Putin likes that? You know, again, under the Trump administration, wiping out the Russian mercs in Syria. So, Sean, this stuff actually happened. The media pays no attention because they're pathetic. They're not, they're not even the media. They're strictly a propaganda arm for the Democrat Party. Let's stop pretending they're reasonable people. Michelle, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to add something because it is so galling and unconscionable for these media outlets now to fashion themselves the champions of our intelligence agencies. They want you to forget that during the Bush administration, it was two New York Times journalists who tipped off Muslim charities, the Global Relief Foundation and the Holy Land Foundation, designated terrorist finance organizations to raids that were about to happen. The U.S. attorney at the time, Patrick Fitzgerald, condemned those leaks and those publications of uh, that dangerous information because it directly impacted and affected those agents that were executing the raids. These are the same people, the New York slimes, that blabbed about uh, re releasing and revealing the identities of CIA interrogators, including the one who interrogated KSM. Again, endangering these intelligence agents and, and ignoring the entreaties of of top officials who uh, were telling them not to do this in the, in the name of, of, of national security. They didn't care then, and they don't care now. Last word, Dan. Yeah, and last night, Sean, the New York Times again, to double down on what Michelle said. What did they do? 
they leak that there's a source close to Putin that's been feeding them information. Nice job, New York Times, outing probably one of our best intelligence sources to try to put egg on the face of Donald Trump, you goofballs. Nice job. Well done, the you treason idiots. times. Yeah. Treason times. Damn right. Scary times, too. All right, thank you both. When we come back... All right, it's so bad that Trump derangement syndrome is so out of control, Judge Jeanine got thrown off the set of The View earlier today, and what happened after is even worse. She'll tell us all about it straight ahead. We brutally ended a segment with our own Judge Jeanine Pirro, threw her off the set. Take a look. There have been a lot of people in office that I didn't agree with, but I have never, ever seen anything like this. I've never seen anybody whip up such hate. I've never seen anybody be so dismissive. How long has the deep state been there and who's running it? Well, the, the, I want to answer your question because you gave you had to ask you a question. Well, you I, I, your opening statement, which was how horrible it is that Donald Trump no, is talking no, no, about that's what you, no, I'm sorry, you know, that's what you said. You said, but you know you what's said horrible? that when it was it's okay. be here and yes. up murdering the children of American citizens. You know what's horrible? What's when, horrible when the president of the United States whips up people to beat no, the hell out of people. No, sick of my all right, here now is the author of the brand new book, Is Liars, Leakers, Liberals, The Case Against the Anti-Trump Conspiracy. You see her every Saturday night, 9 Eastern, right here on Fox. Hello, Judge Jeanine Pirro. Anything going on in your life today? Um, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, Sean, uh, I got an invitation to go on The View to talk about my new book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals. And I accepted the invitation. I was happy to uh, respond to their request. Uh, there was one segment which I thought was rather civil. I mean, they clearly are uh, of a particular bent. Uh, but it was in the second segment that um, you just played where I literally was thrown off the set. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg, uh, you know, basically said, I'm done. She pulled the plug off and walked away. But it didn't end there, Sean. And I think the sad part about all this is that, you know, uh, uh, I said in the first segment, we need to start talking to each other. We need to start having a conversation. People who ostensibly hate each other. And the irony is that I said that about two minutes before she started. And I, I, I just felt that today was a microcosm of what is happening in America as the left suffers from this Trump derangement syndrome, shuts the right down, doesn't allow you to talk. She asks me a question and then yells at me, yells about Donald Trump yells about and when I try to answer she continued to yell but it didn't end there Sean what happened was I realized the segment was over I got up uh, and I, I just started I left the stage going downstairs and I saw her and I had to walk by her and I said Whoopi I fought for victims my whole life something like that and she started cursing at me what did she, she say tell, tell everybody what she me. said without saying it she said blank you F you F you and I said Whoopi did you just say F you I mean I was and she was right here and then she said get the this building and she yelled at me again get the f out of this building and i i felt like i was less than dirt i, I couldn't believe that i went there to have a conversation i got thrown off the set thrown out of the building and as i walked away she's yelling at me get the f out of this building sean it's sad what these people you know, have turned into is sad what is happening well, what's happening is they can't handle that they lost. Um, they can't seem to handle that the world's changed. The worst part, I think, for those on the left is that the president's success is, is causing them to go even more insane because, remember, there was supposed to be this big blue tidal wave, um, but the economy is setting record numbers. I can't wait till the end of next week. I think we got the second quarter of GDP. Estimates are it's going to be pretty good, maybe even as high as 4%, right. um, which... You know, Barack Obama never had in eight years of his presidency 13 million more Americans on food stamps, 8 million more in poverty, yeah. and the president's getting results. But there's no doubt it's a divided country. I've known Whoopi for years. Um, I've watched the show. It's it, Frankly, it's become unwatchable. And the ratings are way, way down from what it used to be. And the fact that they can't have a civil conversation with you is part of the reason. 
Well, you know, Sean, I have co-hosted that show in the past. And during the break between the first and second segment, I looked over at Whoopi and I said, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. And I said, you know, are you still doing something that we used to do together? And she said no. And then I turned to Anna Navarro from CNN. No one told me someone from CNN was going to be a host, which I thought was kind of fascinating. You said fake news. <laughs> and, you know, I tried a conversation. Have a con and all of a sudden, when we came back into the second block, it was all hell broke loose. And, and I have to tell you, Sean, we deserve better. We deserve better than to be berated because we hey, may judge, support the president. Judge, look at what happened to Pam Bondi, Secretary Nielsen, Sarah Sanders. Yep. Look, at, look at the covers that I just showed our audience in my opening monologue tonight. Um, severed heads, dead presidents at the end of escalators now. It yep. is the left is unhinged. They don't have a plan to offer the American people. All they have is innuendo, uh, name-calling, the typical playbook, racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic. They don't have any agenda to improve the lives of people. But the it's not scary, a good time to be a Democrat. The, the and, scary and that's, part is people are going to think this is normal. You know, I wasn't just in a restaurant. I was invited to go there and speak. This is, this is where people start to copy what other people are doing and what Americans It's getting dangerous need. out there. Yeah. It's getting dangerous for yeah. a lot of people. Everybody needs to take a deep breath. And you that, know what? You know, There's an election coming up. Focus on the next election. Right. And focus, you know on, focus on your candidate and maybe... Me, I, I don't even want... Don't, don't change. Just keep being as dumb as they are. That, that'll be perfect. Uh, all right, Judge, I'm sorry you went through that. Thanks for sharing it. Thank you didn't you. deserve it. By the way, the book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, is out in bookstores. Anyway, when we come back, President Trump loving that Joe Biden, crazy Uncle Joe, might run against them in 2020. I happen to be all for it. We have Jesse Waters and Jessica Tarlove. Who will win tonight's It's Your World? Straight ahead. All right, we have some good news tonight. Crazy Uncle Joe Biden. He might be setting his sights on running for president in 2020. According to reports, Joe Biden says he will decide whether he's running for president by January. Now, the President Trump responded to Biden's possible run on CBS Evening News. Let's take a look. Let me ask you about 2020. Um, who do you think your Democratic opponent will be? Joe Biden says he'll make a decision by January. Well, I, I, dream, I dream about Biden. That's a dream. Look, Joe Biden uh, ran three times. He never got more than 1%. And President Obama took him out of the garbage heap, and everybody was shocked that he did. Uh, I, I'd love to have it be Biden. Yeah, he can run on Obama's failed record. If crazy Uncle Joe does decide to run against Trump, it would be interesting... Let's take a look at some of his well, proudest moments. My mother believed and my father believed that if I wanted to press the United States, I could be, I could be vice president. His mom uh, lived in, uh, in Long Island for 10 years or so. Uh, God rest her soul. And uh, um, although she's, wait, your mom's still... Your mom's still alive as your dad passed. God bless her soul. Chuck Graham, state senator's here. Chuck, stand up, Chuck. Let him see you. Oh, God love you. What am I talking about? A man who will be the next president of the United States, Barack America. Delaware, the largest growth in population, is Indian Americans moving from India. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. What kind of a chance would a northeastern liberal like Joe Biden stand uh, in the South? Better than anybody else. Now, you don't know my state. My state was a slave state. My state is a border state. My state is the eighth largest black population in the country. You got the first sort of mainstream African American who was articulate and bright and, and clean and a nice looking guy. And, I mean, it's, that's a story. They're going to put you all back in chains. First mainstream African American that's clean, articulate. My state's a slave state. Oh, you can't go to a 7 Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. Here's the reaction. The co host of The Five has got two shows. The host of Waters World, Jesse Waters, Fox News contributor Jessica Tarlove. Um, okay, Jessica. Um, okay. Imagine any Republican said those really dumb things. What would, what would your side, or how would your side react? 
uh, the same way that we did when Donald Trump said things like that, and he ended up getting elected. Let's talk about so Donald I guess Trump. Joe Biden will be just fine. Joe, crazy Uncle Joe. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. I mean, frankly, some of those gaps aren't terrible at all. They're just misspeaking. They're, he's been in politics 30, 40 years now. There's obviously going to be things on tape that would be embarrassing as it were, but I don't think that has any bearing on what a, he and how he would do in 2020 running against a Donald Trump. We could run reels for hours and hours of hey, President listen, Trump. He can run on his record. His, by the way, Jesse, yeah. the record speaks for itself. Let's see, 13 million more Americans on food stamps, lower, lowest labor participation rate since the 70s. You have 8 million more Americans in poverty after eight years, the worst recovery since the 40s, lowest home ownership in 51 yeah. years. Um, now we'll compare that to the Trump economy, and how's I that going to work out? I mean, Donald Trump has a better record, he has a better economy, and he has better hair than Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe, Biden. Joe Biden actually has great hair. I'm not so sure. <laughs> Joe Biden's a gaff machine. He's got no base. He's got no money. He's got no crowd size. And he's a straight white male, which is a little too much privilege for the Democratic Party. I don't know if they're going to be able to handle that. Plus, the guy's a little creepy. You ever see those videos where he's doing the massages and the whispering with I, the I young a lot of those are doctored. The minute I? Donald Trump retweets that video, game over. <laughs> Creepy Uncle Joe, good night. So I don't think he stands a chance. All right, I'm going to start a new quiz section of the, the Jesse Jessica segment, right? Now put your hand up if you know the answer. Okay. Uh, under Uranium One happened under which administration? Barack. Was it Obama or Trump? Jesse. Obama. Okay, what well, about the Russian? About what uranium what about the Russia? The Russia meddling and interference. Did that happen under Trump or Obama? Barack Obama. I, I feel like you guys are playing a game by yourselves. Uh, what about Crimea but, and but, the Ukraine? Hang on. Crimea, we're playing a game. Crimea and Ukraine. Trump or Obama? Hate to do it. Barack Obama. Oh, what about the reset button? Uh, they handed the little button over through Hillary to Russia. When did that happen? Crooked Hillary under Barack Obama. And what about who said to Dmitry Medvedev, Something wrong, Jessica? Who said to Dimitri uh, Medvedev? I I get to play who it. said, I'll have a little more flexibility after elections? Tell Vladimir. I think that was Barack Hussein Obama himself. Oh, it's nice you threw the middle that. name there. I just wanted okay. to be thorough. Who's been tougher on Russia? Obama or Trump? Oh, wait, you De have to say the other name. Donald J. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Donald J. Trump. Uh, Jessica, I'm just trying to understand your side's freak out. Help us out. Because all this happened freak under out? Obama's watch. Oh, I mean, our freak out. Jesse gets an A-plus for getting every answer right. That is totally stunning to Thank me. Thank you, I deserve yes. it. Yes, <laughs> and because I won last time, I know you really needed that for your ego here. Yeah, I got sick of it. Uh, <laughs> first of all... The, the meddling happened under Obama. The, the meddling, the meddling did happen John under Brennan. Obama, and Democrats have been critical of how the Obama administration handled that. But the President of the United States of America today, Donald J. Trump, as you like to call him, uh, stood up there next to Vladimir Putin and said that he didn't meddle in the election, which everyone knows no, that he I did. No, I actually played on the air last night. you got to pay close attention to the show. Because, whoa, whoa, I played at least seven separate instances where he said Russia did meddle in the elections. He said it over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And so it's not something that he had not said previously many times before. The Okay, so it was the seven times he received the classified information even before his inauguration day that the Russians had meddled in the election. For all seven times that he had said that, and they were pretty waffly anyway, he, he said, said it hundreds right, of times that they didn't. He says it's a witch awesome. hunt. It's not a witch hunt. <laughs> also, you have, why are you laughing, Jesse? You like I'm to say laughing. like Barack Obama, I'm just, Barack Obama. I'm just laughing because you guys are so tough on Russia. Russia ran wild under Barack Hussein Obama. You guys did nothing until a little Hillary got embarrassed with some emails that came out about Chelsea and her wedding. That's Please, me. you guys are not tough. You think global warming is more of a threat than terrorism. You're afraid That's to pour true. water on terrorist heads. You guys have done nothing on Russia, and now you complain because it's an excuse for losing the election. You know what really cost her the election? She fainted. She was a terrible candidate. She didn't go to Wisconsin, and she called half the country deplorable. I think that had a little bit. All right, I got to roll. I, 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 I want you to know, so Jessica, the last time we were together, got her first win. <laughs> Jesse now it. has come back and has won a hundred to nothing. That's never happened. Yeah. No, it's, really it's now, 
Let's tell everyone where it. Jessica was last week. Remember? It's now Moscow. back to Jesse's Jessica world. Jessica was in I went to the semifinals of the World Cup in St. Petersburg. The first time we've ever had a perfect score goes to Jesse Waters. This is insane. Sorry. Maybe next time. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> Maybe next time.